Hello everyone and welcome back to the 29th Abu Dhabi Chess Festival Round 5. Here I'm going to be with you, Women Chess Grandmaster Maria Gevorkian. And we have very interesting games today and there is a fight on the first board for the lead between Fedosey Vladimir and Xuxian Ju. And the games already started, they just started. We can start with the first board. On the second board, we have two players who have three and a half points. And then we have many players with three points. Let's start with the first board, four points, each of them. C4, E6, Knight C3, Bishop B4, E4, C5, Knight B5, D6. Okay, English opening. Uh, I'm not sure about Knight B5 move. Is this a theory? Uh, there were some games played with Knight B5, but not many of them. Uh, knight B5, of course, Knight wants to come to D6 and give a check to the king so that the king will no longer have a castle. But after D6, A3, Bishop A5, and B4. White is ready to sacrifice a piece and a6 was played. Wow, what a sharp opening happened just now. Uh, I wonder if this move this move might not be possible because after capturing bishop before, white can just play queen a4 attacking the bishop and if black tries to save the bishop it will be followed with the discovery double check, probably knight c7 or even knight d6, but knight c7 looks better capturing the rooks so that's why black didn't capture the pawn and instead black played a6 and white ignored that the knight is hanging and played bishop b2 e5 and okay we have knight d6 uh, could this knight d6 work earlier? Let's say knight d6, queen d6, and capture on a5. It would probably be followed with a knight c6, and sooner or later white will lose this pawn on a5. Uh, what was played in the game, uh, bishop b2, uh, now we can see that, okay, white's knight is hanging, black's bishop is hanging, but... Also, the g7 pawn is hanging and black has a problem, which has to be solved. And e5 is blocking the bishop. But after e5, knight d6, queen d6, white captures the bishop and knight c6. And as I mentioned earlier, the a5 pawn is going to be lost very soon, sooner or later. And now this e5 pawn, is it better to have the pawn on e5 or e6 for the white? But... Uh, B2 square is made for the bishop, so it is standing in the right square. Now the knight wants to take the pawn, but let's not forget about this beautiful outpost on D4 square for the knight. And after knight C6, it's white to play. White is using its time, trying to find a good move. And I wonder about, maybe this move looks a little bit aggressive, but F4. Because now black cannot capture it. White will capture the bishop g7, trapping the rook. And after f4, uh, what shall black play? I want to play knight f3, the next move. f6 looks a little bit uh, dangerous for the black. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling about this move. But maybe this is a move that can happen. But um, white can capture, black can capture, and knight f3. Well, white has this outpost on d5 for the knight also, but white's knight is not transforming to d5 yet, and black's knight is very close to come on d4. And there is going to be an interesting fight for the squares. Knight c6. Is there any other move rather than f4 or white might be already a little bit worse in this? No, white is fine, of course, because 
the bishop works very well, but I like this uh, move f4, trying to distract this a5 pawn. Okay, we'll be back to this game shortly. Let's check what is happening in the other games. And on the board number two, we have Indian Grandmaster Aryan Chopra against Indian International Master Rathanvel VS. And both of them have three and a half points. The game started e4, c5, uh, Sicilian, d6, bishop b5. Queen d4, a6, bishop e2, knight gf6, this is all a theory, castle, e5, queen e3. Uh, black uh, spent more time than uh, white, but it's understandable because, uh, well, bishop b5 is one of the main moves, but uh, sometimes you don't repeat this move before the round and you have to remember what will happen later. And here black has three options, a knight c6, knight d7, and bishop d7. And each of them are leading to a different positions. But here black chose to play with knight d7, d4, capture, queen comes to the center, a6, bishop e2, knight gf6, castle, and e5. Queen e3, bishop e7, and white plays c4. We can see that there is another game with this d5 square outpost and black played here knight f8 i don't know about this move knight f8 uh castle looks more natural uh well d6 is a weakness but why how fast is y for taking this pawn on d6 let's say knight c3 knight c5 maybe because where this knight is going, okay, if it wants to come to e6, then it's better to bring it to e6 with the, from c5. And maybe a black player wants to put it on g6. Uh, we can go back to the game after c4, knight f8, rook d1, and knight g6. Yeah, this was, looks more logical because if the knight was transforming to e6, then it would be easier through the c5 square. Knight c3 and castle, and we have this current position. Uh, what we can say about this position, d6 is a weak pawn, d5 is a nice outpost for the white knight, and uh, in these positions we say that it's better to, when you bring a piece to d5 and opponent captures, it's better to capture with the piece uh, and not a pawn. Were there any games played in this position? No. Both players are out of theory now and it is white to play. White is trying to find a way to play. Uh, I feel like there shall be a few opportunities to play. Uh, Black wants to play knight g4. Maybe h3 would be a nice move to stop knight g4. Let's say h3. Is it possible to play knight e5? Knight f4 is impossible because uh, black might lose a pawn on e5. The d6 pawn is pinned. So h3 looks very logical to me now. Uh, castle and h3. Maybe queen c7 or bishop e6. Yeah, bishop e6 is possible. And how to continue with the white pieces. Uh, knight is not coming to d5 yet, and if we want to transform this knight to d5, it's going to be a very long road. Uh, let's say knight e1, knight c2, knight b4, knight d5, and it's not very clear if it's worth spending this time or no. Maybe b3 and bishop a3 might be another option to put more pressure on the pawn on d6. And b3 looks a useful move. Also, this is against the rook c8, because maybe the white sooner or later will have to play b3, uh, because after rook c8 move, uh, always c4 pawn will be hanging. But knight c3, castle, and it is white to play. I think we can move to the next game. And on the board number three, we have an uh, interesting game, Artemiev against Venakataraman. Kartik and okay 
we already have a middle end game uh, Italian game with d5 castle bishop e7 rook e1 f6 and uh, d4 white is trying to open up the center as long as the king is in the center and we shall always remember that after castle this bishop is dominating on the diagonal and black played knight b6 bishop b3 and knight d4 yes otherwise white was very close to open up the center and attack the king knight d4 knight d4 queen d4 and the white exchanged the queens here if not exchanging the queens what will happen let's say black is currently a pawn up if queen h5 check trying to weaken the black's king side g6 will be played and queen f3 what will happen after queen f3 maybe black will still try to exchange the queens queen g4 and not easy to say what is happening uh, so yeah white's uh, choice to play queen d4 is probably the best black captures and bishop f4 starting an attack on c7 pawn and now black cannot protect this pawn there are a few options let's say if c6 then black will lose a piece after bishop d6 if king d7 or king d8 again black will lose the pawn because bishop c7 is possible after king captures there is rook e7 and after any other move is not possible so black cannot uh, keep this pawn alive black cannot keep this pawn alive this moves like c5 bishop d6 c4 are not gonna be the best because rook e7 is possible say king d8 and white can just start taking pawns okay after bishop f4 uh, in the game it was played bishop f5 bishop c7 and king d7 and this is our current position the material is equal the queens are gone uh, d4 pawn might be a uh, subject to attack very soon uh, after developing the knight on b1 uh, probably white has a little advantage on the board number four we have uh, Suleimanli against Anton Gujero e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop e5 uh, just a remember a reminder for our viewers if you have any preferred game to check out and uh, maybe your favorite chess player maybe your friend is playing feel free to say it in the chat and we're gonna check it out together bishop a4 knight f6 castle bishop e7 Rui lopez d6 a3 well the theory says that the move here is c3 let's say castle h3 and uh, knight a5 bishop c2 and uh, c5 and it's a long theory uh, after d6 white played a3 this is also a possible move castle knight c3 knight b8 of course black is trying to play c5 very soon h3 knight bd7 bishop e3 rook b8 a4 and c6 and it is white to play both players looks like are out of their preparation and we're gonna have a long Rui Lopez game I guess what can white play here okay knight is on c3 so white doesn't want to play d4 anywhere yet maybe now maybe now but why not to open the a file after capturing yeah black will not capture with the a pawn will capture with the c pawn and what is happening is the a6 a weakness or no it is maybe just to play a calm game queen d2 
maybe later knight h2, f4, trying to open up the center. Maybe after a takes on b5, black has to capture with the a pawn. But now white gets uh, nice control over the a file with the rook. And capturing on b5 pawn looks pretty good for white. For now, but uh, if not to capture, even even let's say playing queen d2 shouldn't be a bad idea. But white is taking its time. White is not in a hurry. And after c6, yeah, white captured on b5, and black has two options now: either capture with the a pawn or with the c pawn. And the Spanish Grandmaster is trying to understand which one is going to be better. Because after capturing with the C pawn, captured with A pawn, he didn't take long. Can white keep the A, A file or not really? Let's say Queen D2, Bishop B7 uh, with the idea of Rook A8. What to play? Maybe Rook A7. The idea is that after rook a8, white can play rook a1, and white is still dominating on the a-file. Queen d2 looks very logical. Is there any other move? Like d4 will not work, probably. Yeah, after d4, uh, white will lose a pawn. After b4, knight e4 will be hanging. Okay, we will be back to this game very soon. Let's see what is happening in the other games. On the board number five, we have uh, Matlakov against Suleymanov. And knight f3, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5, captures, captures, h4. Again, we see this h4 moves too often lately in the games. And here we have the anglo grunfeld opening, h4. I don't know if this is a theory or no. I can try to check it out. Yes, this is a theory. And bishop g7 was played, h5, d4, h5, sorry, knight c6, d4, bishop f5, and rook h4. Now white is threatening to play e4. But where is this king going to go? Rook h4. Is there a move like queen b3 here? Forcing black to capture uh, knight c3. Is there any other move? Not really, because e4 will be following. Knight c3, white can capture with the b pawn. Now uh, d4 pawn is very well placed. Queen b3 was possible, but rook h4, it's a very interesting move. And after rook h4, it was played uh, bishop f6, g4. Let's uh, let's see what is happening. Uh, white just sacrificed an exchange, and why is it done so? Is it a line, or he just decided to play g4 in front of the chessboard? Uh, bishop h4 and takes on g5. Yeah, black accepted the exchange sacrifice and captured it, and e6. After e6, all the pieces are protected. h4 bishop is protected. Uh, captures, captures. Now the king is uh, opened up. And bishop h3. White doesn't lose any time to attack this pawn on e6. Queen e7. Knight d5. Captures and bishop h6. Stopping the black king from castling to any of the sides. We can see that the two white bishops are just controlling these diagonals and the black king cannot castle anymore. Uh, so black plays king f7 and it follows with a queen b3 and rook a d8. 
now white has a choice if after, instead of rook a d8 what would happen if yeah queen b4 doesn't work of course black would be very happy to exchange the queens and rook a d8 what will happen after if i will be a little bit greedy and try to capture a pawn queen b4 is not possible Maybe it is possible. Queen b4 check. Let's say uh, queen b4, knight b4, and maybe just rook c1 here. The thing is that we cannot capture the bishop because knight c2 will be a trap, a fork, and maybe just rook c1 here. And now uh, c7 pawn is hanging, the bishop on h4 is hanging, and has to be winning. And uh, so what makes the queen b7 not working? How to play with the black pieces after queen b7? We protect the knight. I don't like running away with the knight because... Uh, let's say knight a5 white doesn't have directly knight e5 but uh, maybe just queen a7 or I shouldn't be too greedy I shouldn't be too greedy maybe just queen a6 yeah queen a6 knight c4 and uh, knight h4 might be possible because uh, the queen can no longer capture here. It will be followed with the checkmate. Okay, queen b3, rook a d8. Maybe queen b7 is actually possible. Uh, black played quite fast this move, rook a d8. Because I want to take control over the e5 square and the only way to take control over the e5 square is, and uh, what is standing between white's knight and e5 square is this knight on c6. So basically it's a chance for white to attack the knight and uh, take a pawn at the same time. But maybe rook d6 is a move here. Black has to keep the knight on c6. Otherwise if white knight will arrive on, on the square on e5 it will be... a uh, problem for the black okay rook d 8 was played this is a very interesting game uh, we will be back to it and board number 6 we have Liddy against Hans Niemann d4 knight f6 c4 e6 g3 d5 again another Catalan Knight f3, castle, castle, knight bd7, this is a theory, uh, queen c2, uh, c6. I think this is already the second game, Hans Niemann is playing the same line, and a4, a5, rook c1, and knight e4. Has to be a theory yet, 91. Uh, by the way, uh, we have to give an attention that white has way more time than the black. So white is might be still in the preparation. f5. Knight d3, bishop f6, e3. And black goes for an attack. Yesterday he played this move g4, Hans Niemann Mok, and today he goes for g5. He went for g5, and apparently he spent quite some time before playing g5. Uh, bishop e1 was played, uh, white doesn't want to exchange this bishop with this knight. And h5, black is starting a attack on the white king right away. But how is it going to continue? 
knight c3 and rook f7 probably trying to bring the rook to g7 or maybe queen f8 is going to happen uh knight e2 and rook h7 black is preparing h4 and now white has to play and find a solution aggressive game by uh, hans niemann with the idea h4 opened the file and trying to attack the king How can white stop this? What can white play in this position? Interesting. Rook h7. The knight on e4 is a very strong piece. Maybe just start by removing it from e4 with the move uh, pawn to f3. So white, uh, black will have to uh, run away with the knight to d6. And uh, what to do with this pawn on c4? Just capture, open the queen side and try to create some game on the queen side. Or maybe not capture and just uh, force the pieces even more back. C5, let's say knight f7 and uh, can I play b4 or not yet? But b4 might be happening somewhere. Well, rook h7, it's a pretty uh, aggressive game by black pieces, by black player. And white is not in a rush, white is taking its time. Starting an attack while you still have some pieces that are not developed. And what's going to happen with this bishop? Because uh, the bishop is just too pressed on c8, we can see it. Where is this bishop going to go? Maybe at some point it will transform to bishop g6 or maybe bishop h5 after black will succeed to play h4 but uh, well after f3 it's not very that easy to find a move because knight is uh, knight will have to leave the comfortably occupied beautiful e4 square f3 f3 looks good uh, i think we can move to the next game before uh, white will do a move and on board number seven we have uh, Sindarov playing against Chanda and we have another uh, middle end game e4 c5 knight c3 d6 d4 this is the line that was first time played by Magnus Carlsen and knight c6 and queen d2 with the idea of bringing b3 and bishop b2 uh, and e6 was played uh, usually black prefers to play g6 later the bishop goes either to g7 or h6 and it's a very interesting fight happening there f6 b3 and d5 black is in a hurry to attack the center but does it work is white just capturing a pawn or yes white is just capturing a pawn but black uh, player with the black pieces is playing quite fast Maybe this is a preparation. I never saw this uh, answer against this line. D5 captures, captures, and queen d5. Bishop e6 and queen d8. White is pawn up. Why not to exchange some pieces? Bishop b2, bishop f5, and apparently it's not that easy to keep this pawn on c2. White will have to give it up. Knight f3, bishop c2, and bishop b5. And the next move, uh, white is going to do a short castle, and black has a little problem here with all these undeveloped pieces. Uh, slowly they will go out, but white uh, managed to already uh, do all of it. Bishop e5, how to continue with the black pieces? Shall the bishop go out first? Maybe 
Does white have any threat? After bishop b4, white can play a3. How to develop the pieces with the black pieces? Um, of course, there are no games. Uh, maybe start with a knight. Bishop before looks very natural, but what happens after a3? Uh, bishop a5, and I want to play before. Let's say bishop goes to b6, and I will play a short castle. Or maybe even, uh, can I move the knight and attack g7? Is this or not kind of a move possible? Knight e2 or knight a4? Castle. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so what was played in the game is after bishop b5, Blake is still thinking because it's quite understandable, it's not that easy to find a move here. Okay, uh, I would like to play with the white pieces here. Shall we move to the next game and it's going to be board number eight. Uh, Dai Changren against uh, Aravind. And d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, d5. Captures, captures, bishop g5, bishop e7, e3, castle, well, some, uh, yeah, we have the queen's gambit uh, declined. Okay, uh, we will take a very short break and we will be back very soon, uh, very, very soon. Don't go anywhere. We're continuing now. And one more time, this is round five of Abu Dhabi Chess Festival.
Welcome back everyone and we are continuing our live commentary on the round five of Abu Dhabi Chess Festival and uh, I offer to go back to the first board where after knight c6 we were thinking and uh, f4 was played in the game f4 was played in the game after f4 uh, black played f6 and white captured on e5 black has to capture with a pawn so f4 f6 captures captures and queen h5 check g6 and queen h5 and this is the position that we have right now and it is uh, black to play uh, black knight cannot move right now because uh, after knight a5 e5 will be hanging uh, white's next move is knight f3 uh, putting more pressure on the pawn on e5 and let's say uh, is knight d4 possible here knight d4 uh, white can white play knight f3, knight c2? What happens here? Maybe just king d1. And uh, yes, black is uh, losing a lot of material. Material, uh, Bishop e5, and then it, it's going to be a big advantage for white. Okay, so queen g5. What else to play? Is h6 possible? Trying to move the queen away. Queen g3. Still keeping the pressure on the pawn on e5, and now there is also a pr pressure on g6 pawn. Queen g5. Let's say if knight f6, knight f3, e4 pawn is hanging. Maybe knight f6 is the move. Uh, white shall uh, probably protect the pawn. d3. And after d3... What to play? I still want to play knight f3. Well, queen g5, white's threat is to play knight f3 and attack this pawn on e5. That was the whole idea of playing f4. And black is not in a hurry, but I have to mention that white has an advantage of 20 minutes on the chessboard, which is a big advantage. Let's move to the second board, and here we have... We stopped on this moment after a castle. White played h3 because knight g4 was a threat. h6 and a4. And black played b6. Wants to develop the bishop on b7. How shall white continue here? Maybe uh, b3. Uh, this b3 always looks fine because, uh, first of all, we are protecting c4 pawn. Uh, we are threatening to play bishop a3 to put more pressure on the pawn on d6. So after a4, b6, what can happen here? Uh, b3. b3 looks very logical for me and very natural for me. Let's say b6, bishop b7, and bishop a3. Uh, black can continue maybe. Rook c8. And... I could try to double my rooks on uh, d file. Yes, this is uh, pretty possible, very much possible. Rook d2 with the idea of rook d1, putting more pressure on d6. Uh, white's game looks pretty easy here. And black has to spend some time. Uh, but black is playing qui quite confidently. So maybe there is something I'm missing. I think b3 will be played very soon. b3, bishop b7 looks also natural, bishop a3 looks natural, rook c8 and rook d2. But this looks like a nice advantage for the white. And maybe queen c7, rook d1, rook d8. And how to continue here? What shall white play here? Not, not very easy. White has to find an idea. Black's position uh, 
okay, it is passive, but is it enough to win the game? Is it enough to break through somewhere? Looks fine. Black is not losing anything for now. Knight f4 might be might be coming at some point. Uh, yeah, black has a pos passive position, but uh, passive doesn't mean losing. Okay, we can go to the board number uh, three, where after king d7, knight d2, bishop c5, and knight e4. So after bishop e4, white is forced to capture bishop b6. Let's say bishop b6, rook e4, and le this looks like going to a draw. Uh, but for now, there is only open for one open file, e file, and black cannot fight for it with the rook e8 because there is always bishop a4 check. But maybe this is white's idea to go there. Uh, knight e4, what other moves are possible for black? Bishop b4 is possible. After bishop b4, maybe c3. After c3. Black can capture, uh, white will take the bishop, and this d4 pawn will be hanging very soon, maybe even start with the check. Oh, sorry, it's uh, black to play. Yeah, rook d8 has to be played, because uh, after rook c1, at least the king will be able to go and hide on b8 square. Okay, knight e4 and black is thinking, black has a few options, but after knight e4 looks like a lot of exchanges are going to happen. And what happens if black just wants to play bishop e7? What, uh, rook d1? Rook d1 will be played and d4 will be lost. No, sorry, rook d1 is impossible. Uh, just bishop b6 captures and maybe now rook d1. And the thing is that after bishop c3, c5, there is always a move like c3, and white is winning a pawn. Okay, knight e4, black is still thinking, uh, but how to play with the black pieces here? Maybe just king c7 captures on c5, this is another possibility, and rook e8, still fighting for the open e file. This looks pretty good for white, to be honest, because this pawn will always be hanging on d4. Black has to make an uneasy choice after knight e4. Knight e4 was a nice find uh, with a white player. We can move to the fourth board, and let's see what happened here. After a takes on b5, knight e2 was played. Uh, as we mentioned, white is not in a hurry to decide what to do later, slowly improving the positions queen c7 and c3. Later, white uh, will play knight g3, protecting e4 pawn and pushing d4, uh, taking the center, and after d5, knight captured, and knight d5, and it is white to play. Uh, wasn't there a move knight g3 instead of capturing on d5? Because I still don't want to lose the pawns, not the, the pair of bishops, knight g3, capturing I don't like because then the bishop plays very strong, maybe knight c5 here is possible, even here just bishop c2, next move b4 and I can return with the bishop to b3 anytime I want, but after uh, capturing uh, on d5, knight d5, and it is uh, white to play, white has to, uh, white shouldn't exchange this bishop with this knight, maybe bishop d2 is the move. Yeah. So this is our game on the board number four, and uh, let's go to the board number five, where Matlak of Maxim is playing against Suleiman of Alisher, a lot of things happen here, and uh, this position after rook d8, queen b7, white actually captured this pawn, and it 
followed with the rook h e8. Uh, white cannot capture the knight now because black will give a checkmate. So what to play with the white pieces? Does a uh, long castle work here? Long castle? What will happen after long castle? Maybe again now rook d6. Because black won one extra tempo with a rook e8. Rook d6 protecting the knight. Will it work or no? Is there a capturing, capturing queen c7, queen e7? If black manages to hide the king and start cooperating with the pieces, then the advantage of an exchange will be pretty much felt. But for now, it's not that easy. Rook d6, maybe bishop f4, and rook f6. After rook f6, so. Uh, Is bishop e5 possible? Black has to capture and white captures with uh, d5. Winning a pawn and then we will take on e5. So rook h8. Nice move. Um, maybe white shall play something differently instead of a long castle maybe e3 or even no it's not gonna work e3 also e3 e3 still works because bishop is protecting it uh, and doesn't matter that there is this pin this pawn is very well protected maybe e3 is a better move than a long castle because after e3 king uh, Rook d6, still trying. After rook d6, white can play rook c1. And now the knight on c6 will be hanging. The position is very complicated. After rook e8, uh, a lot of things are happening. And uh, let's, let's not forget that white is exchanged down and has to play very accurate. The black, black's king is a weak king on f7 and the white's bishops are pretty active but is it enough uh, in the next game uh, f3 was played in the hans Niemann game rook h7 uh, b4 captured bishop b4 knight b8 rook a b1 knight a6 bishop a3 and h4 so f3 was not played and black managed to successfully play h4. Is this attack a very dangerous attack or it's not a very dangerous attack? Uh, how to continue with the white pieces? Maybe f3. Knight d6. What to play? Maybe capture on d5. Okay, a move was played and the move is knight e5. What black wants to do? Get rid of this h pawn, trying to bring the queen to h file, and maybe we, black can try to start it right away. The thing is that after queen e8, uh, the knight is trapped, f3. And if capture, uh, white captures, even here it's not enough because every time the queen moves, f3 is a terrible threat. Knight e5 and uh, Hans Niemann is 30 minutes behind in the clock. 30 minutes behind on the clock and it's a big advantage. If uh, black will not manage to eventually find a checkmate, the game might finish very soon. Let's see what is Salem doing. 
cannot find his game yet. Uh, Salam missed a nice win yesterday and uh, also in the previous uh, day. So rook b1, bishop e6. Let's start from the very beginning. Uh, Salam is playing with the black pieces against Iranian Fidel Master, Taham Atin, knight f3, knight f6, g3, c5, bishop g2, knight c6, castle and e5. E4, D6, this is a theory, knight C6, G6, D3, and uh, black place in this pawn structure. A3, castle, rook B1, bishop E6, bishop D2, uh, H6, and B4. Later, if I'm not mistaken, black has some ideas like bringing the knight to C7, playing, uh, protecting the knight on C6, maybe even pushing F5 at some point. So B6 was played, knight E2. And black captured on b4, captured and b5. Queen c1, king h7, knight h4, and d5. Uh, player with the white pieces has a, is so short in time. Salem played quite fast. Uh, he spent only 20 minutes until now, and his opponent spent uh, almost one hour to get to this position. After d5, if uh, white tries to capture, uh, and white captured, uh, bishop d5. Exchanging the bishops will be only a favor of black. Maybe even knight d5 is possible with the later uh, f5. No, bishop d5. Bishop d5 looks uh, pretty good. After bishop d5, what can white play? Let's say... Um, exchanging the pieces definitely for black. Not exchanging the pieces. Let's say bishop h3. Uh, what will happen here? Is there a move like g5? Knight f5 and g4 maybe. Maybe even no. Maybe even... Uh, is bishop h8 possible? Trying to keep the bishop. Oh. There might be some tactical opportunities. Bishop g5 captures and queen g5. Okay, in the game it was played after e takes on d5. Uh, black captured, the bishop takes on d5. Knight f3, or uh, how to play with the white pieces? Maybe bishop h3 is one of the options, but it's not an easy option to make with the white pieces, uh, as exchanging the bishops, for example, queen takes. Uh, the material is equal, but is it easy to play with this position? Knight c3 wants to capture the pawn on d5, but after queen d7, knight b5 might not be possible because there will be a very, very um, uh, dangerous ideas maybe with queen h3, knight g4 attacking the pawn on h2. Yep. So bishop d5 was played and white probably will take another long time to decide what he wants to play. This was the Salem's position. Is there any interesting games? Maybe we can just go through them very fast, starting from the first board. Uh, Knight f6 was played on the first board, d3 and bishop g4. Trying to stop uh, Knight f3, h3 and h6. Is black losing a piece here? Looks like black is losing a piece. Queen g6. What will be played? 
king has to go somewhere. Let's say king, uh, but where? King f8 and can I just capture the g4? I cannot because there is 97. There is 97. Okay, so after h6, queen g6, king f8. If I don't capture, uh, what will happen? Knight e7 is a serious threat. So after h6, maybe the queen will need to go back. But of course, white one doesn't want to take the pawn queen back. There is really nothing here. Then why Evalbar is showing so high? Why Evalbar is showing so high? Maybe someone in the chat can help me here because... Uh, okay, he captured queen g6. He captured queen g6. What happens after king f8? Let's say white captures on g4. But knight e7. What else to play? Is there a knight f3 move? Maybe just knight f3. The idea is that after knight e7, I have bishop e5. And what happens after bishop e5? White has a king f8 was played. Okay, and what is going to be played here? This is the main question. Knight f3 looks pretty good. Knight f3. Okay, looks like the queen is trapped, but after knight e7, simple bishop e5, and what is wrong with this position? I mean, white is two pawns up right now, and uh, king is weak. Uh, the bishop on b2 is a very strong piece. The pawn on e5 is hanging, and if black is not... Uh, if black is not just trapping the queen, then white has a winning position. King f8. He played very fast to move king f8. Okay, if capturing, we understand. There is knight e7 trapping the queen, but knight f3. Is there any way to trap the queen? Maybe someone from the chat can see some ideas that I'm missing. Knight f3 just winning for white. Even rook g8 doesn't work here because there is always queen h6 check and the bishop is hanging now. Uh, and if you, uh, bishop captures uh, the knight trying to save the pawn, then uh, still no one is uh, winning this queen. And later bishop pawn on h6 would be hanging with the bishop c1 trying to attack here. I, I don't see anything, knight f3. Is there a move like bishop h5 here? What happens after bishop h5? Queen f5. And still knight e7 is not possible. Uh, maybe we can see the first board, uh, the video of the first board um, to see what is happening there now and uh, how Fedosev is checking the game. Okay, we still have the plank hole. K 
King F8 and white to play. Wow. Okay, we'll be back. We will be back to see what happened here. Uh, let's check out the board number two. Uh, so what was played here? Uh, after b6, white played b3, queen c7, bishop a3. This looked very logical, knight f4, because e5 pawn is no longer hanging. Bishop f1 and g5. And black is starting uh, the attack. This is a fast attack in g5. Very nice. What to play with white? Uh, g4 is coming. What can we play it here after g5? How to stop g4? Maybe just play g4? But maybe there is nothing to be scared of uh, g4. Maybe there is no need to be scared of it. And go out with the pieces normally. I still want to, let's say... Uh, Double the rooks, g4. I will have to capture captures and uh, let's say queen e1 because the black queen is quite far, it's not uh, joining the attack uh, nearby uh, anytime soon. Rook d1 is a threat now, uh, capturing the pawn on d6. And what to do? Just what to do. Uh, let's go back to the first board to see what happened because I still feel like uh, the move will be played soon. Okay, the move is still not played and maybe we will go for a short break and I think we're gonna have a move after very soon on the first board which is a very interesting position. The winner is getting uh, the lead and it's move number 16. And it looks uh, very dangerous for the black pieces already, even for the white player, because the queen might be trapped at some point. But uh, we'll be back very soon and hope to see a move on the first board. See you soon. Don't go anywhere.
Hello everyone and welcome back to the round five of Abu Dhabi Chess Festival 2023. And here we are back and we're following, we were following this position and uh, white played here, bishop c1. And black answered bishop h5, which followed with the bishop h6 check. King e7, queen g5, and knight d4. Evalbar didn't like the queen g5 move. Maybe queen g7, check. But okay, queen g5, knight d4. And what is happening? Uh, white is three pawns up. But the king is not castled yet. And there are three pieces that were not developed. After knight d4, there is a threat of knight c2. And now white has to make a decision again. Um, well, giving up this uh, rook will be, of course, not the best option. There are two moves, I guess, rook c1 and rook a2 to be played here. Let's say rook c1, which looks very natural. What to play after rook uh, c1? And what is my next move? Knight e2 is my is a white next move. Is there like rook hg8? Let's say queen e3. Queen e3 works or no? Oh, after queen e3, black might have a beautiful uh, answer. Beautiful tactics. Is there a knight? Beautiful line, knight e4. And after knight e4, uh, if queen captures, there is rook h6. And if the pawn captures, does knight c2 work here? Or just rook h6, maybe just rook h6. Let's not go for anything crazy. Just rook h6 and the uh, position looks very dangerous now for white. Uh, so after knight d4, uh, white played rook a2. Stops knight c2. What will happen after rook hg8? There is bishop g7 with the threat of capturing, exchanging the queens, and then uh, the danger from the white king will be gone. And what if hg8? Again bishop g7? Maybe again bishop g7. Yeah. Again bishop g7. The moment white will exchange the queens, white's position will be winning because three pawns is a huge advantage. So after rook a2, uh, then what can black play here after rook e2? Because bishop g7 is a serious threat at this moment. Maybe knight e6, trying to push the queen back so that bishop g7 will not happen. Uh, queen e3 or queen d2. Let's say uh, queen d2. I want to keep one more square for my bishop on e3. Uh, rook a g8 and and how to develop the pieces okay g4 looks too risky maybe white will just keep the king in the center at some point knight f3 uh, bishop g2 doesn't work right now because uh, bishop e2 g2 is always hanging well but it's not easy to play with the black pieces also after rook a2 knight e6 i think has to be played Or maybe king d7, trying to stop the bishop g7, but it doesn't start bishop g7 because bishop g7 is a th serious threat. And knight e4 is not possible right now because uh, the knight is pinned. And after rook g8, there is just simple bishop g7. Knight e6 has to be played uh, because uh, black shouldn't allow bishop g7 to happen.
Okay. Shall we go to check some other games before they are thinking? I was in the playing hall and I saw, I was trying to find some very interesting and sharp games and uh, there was some stuff happening in the position uh, board number five. Uh, let us go fast, uh, rookie eight, uh, long castle happened here and uh, black played here knight a5. I think we were checking rook d6 here because moving the knight is letting white uh, after knight a5, white captured queen a7 and if I'm not mistaken black played here as much as I saw, uh, black played here rook a8 and happened uh, queen c5. So I guess this is a current position, but uh, let's check the time. Uh, Matlakov has only 12 minutes and the opponent uh, and Suleimanov has 56 minutes. It's a big time advantage. It's a very big time advantage. And uh, let's not uh, forget that after 40th move, there is no increment. So this time, con time will continue being the same until the end of the tournament of the game. And uh, to play in this kind of a sharp position with such a low time it's not an it's not the easiest thing to do and uh, let's check the game on board six uh, Hans Niemann uh, here uh, what happened here is uh, before was played black captured white captured knight b8 rook b1 knight a6 rook bishop a3 and h4 we stopped at this position after knight a5 Hans Niemann decided to push h3 and bishop f1 and queen a5. And queen a5. But the thing is that after h3, uh, let's say if before black wanted to uh, start some attack on the king side, now th after this h3, there is no way to break through on the king side. Queen A5. So F3, there is Knight D2. White can try to stop Knight D2. Rook D1 maybe, uh, with the idea of, uh, with the threat of F3 and trapping the Knight. But um, here black probably can just uh, capture the Knight give double pawns and play g4 with the following idea, maybe knight g5 and uh, trying to attack the pawns. Yeah, after queen a5, white can still think a little bit. Can white capture on d5? What happens if capture and black captures with the c pawn? Then uh, there should be some, is there some tactical opportunity? Yes, queen c8 works here. Rook c8, uh, rook c8, king g7, and bishop f8, and king g8, and bishop h6. No, not bishop h6, because b there is bishop d8. But how to finish the game here? Okay, I mean, even bishop b4 has to be winning, right? Just uh, taking the queen and... Uh, I'm going for it. Uh, rook b7. Rook b7 also might be winning. Yeah, okay. Uh, so after c takes on d5, black cannot capture with the c pawn. Uh, black can capture with the e pawn instead. And here, this is not going to work anymore. But the thing is that now... Are there some tactical opportunities again? Maybe there are. Uh, dear viewers, one more time, I would like to remind you that... If you have any preferred game to check out, just let me know in the chat and we're gonna check it together. So, it takes on d5. There's also bishop e5 move. Bishop e5, white has to capture. And uh, does this move work now or not again? Is queen c8 again possible? Yeah, this has to be winning. Yeah, rook b5 maybe. Rook b5 uh, pushing the queen back. Queen d8 and f3. And black is losing a piece. 
So again, black has to capture with the e pawn, not to lose the knight. So if f3, there is always knight d2. It's just a calm game, knight d4. White's position looks quite... Actually, white played here rook d1. He heard me uh, with the threat of f3, but uh, here black can just capture on e5 and then play g4. Or just g4 right away and f3 is stopped. So rook d1, most probably g4 will be played very soon. Uh, I offer to go back to the first board and see what happened there uh, because some moves were played. Okay, uh, knight d4, rook a2 and black played knight e6. Uh, white played queen c1 and black captured rook h6, queen h6 and knight f4. We, all of us need a few moments to understand what is happening. Black is threatening to capture knight d3. Maybe rook d2, but uh, is rook d2 possible? Rook d2 with a threat of g3. Not to play, it's rook g8. And is... Uh, white has a big material advantage, but uh, this is all what chess is about. When you don't develop your pieces, then it becomes a problem. The king is in the center, the queen is kind of trapped, it has nowhere to go. But uh, still, white is uh, exchanging how many pawns up. Exchange and three pawns up. This is a huge material advantage, very big material advantage. But uh, is it enough? I mean, uh, white species are just not getting into the game. Is there a g4 possibility? I think g4, white, black can just repeat the moves, right? Yeah, actually, after knight e6, queen c1 takes, takes knight f4. Black wants to capture on d3, and the next thing black wants to do, if black will not want to play for a win, the possibility is to bring the rook to g8, and then g6 and g8, and repeat the position. Uh, queen g7 followed after knight f4. Of course, white is not going to let the material advantage go so easily away. Uh, because after we can check it again after rook d2, uh, black had, could just play rook g8 and the queen is trapped. Whatever white planes, uh, plays, uh, black just have this opportunity of attacking the queen wherever it goes. So queen g7 check is the only move that is still fighting for a win. And uh, black has a few moves here. Uh, bishop f7 is a possibility, king e6. King e6 was played very fast. And how to continue with the white pieces? Maybe just queen g3, this is the idea. And all the pieces are protected. Queen g3, queen e3, and later white might try to play g3 and g4. What will happen after queen g3? Let's check, for example, if rook g8, white will just play queen e3, and after queen e3, g3 and g4 is just going to stop everything. So after queen g3, black has to find a move. King e6 was played and uh, Fedosev is still thinking. Queen g3. With the threat of queen e3, g3 and g4 pushing the black species back and then enjoying the material advantage. How shall black continue here after queen g3? Maybe try to open the queen side. 
the B file might be decisive here. Let's say uh, rook B8 maybe. What will happen after, let's say, rook B8, queen E3, and B6. Eval bar doesn't agree with me, but I still want to try it out. Maybe just G3. Yeah, G3. And uh, black doesn't have anything happening. So queen g3, maybe queen d4. Or is there a move like rook d8 uh, with the idea of queen e3? Uh, black captures, let's say capture, 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 and e4 becomes a weakness. Also c4 is a weakness. Maybe just g4 here. G4 bishop trying to connect the uh, uh, rooks. I I really wonder what black has in the mind after queen g3. What happens after queen d4 uh, to stop queen e3? Rook b2 also is stopped. And how to go out if knight f3, knight d3 is hanging. If the rook moves, queen a1 check will be happening. What to play now? Maybe just uh, queen f2 has to be played. Knight d3, bishop d3, queen d3, and somehow try to activate the pieces. Maybe g4. g4, there is queen e4. And after queen e4, h1 will be hanging. Maybe queen f5. Queen f5, black will play king f7. And it's not gonna work, or it will. Ah, there is rook d2 now. Is there? Rook d2, if queen b1, uh, king f2. If uh, rook d2, queen e3, knight e2. And the checks are stopped. Is there rook d8? Rook d8, after rook d8, is rook f1 a possibility or no? Rook f1, queen d2 check. How to play here? Evalbar uh, strictly believes that white is 100% playing here. But practically, there are so many chances, so many interesting ideas and uh, variations. But how to play here? Uh, rook d8 is impossible, of course, because of queen e2 checkmate. So after rook d8, maybe the easiest uh, is just to capture queen h5, captures and uh, rook d8, but it will be followed by uh, knight g3. Knight g3. So it is also not going to work. What will happen after rook d8? g4 is not possible, maybe just rook b2. Yeah, rook b2. Threatening uh, rook b7. Very interesting position. Is there anything else instead of uh, queen g3 here? Or queen g3, apparently queen d4 has to be played. And... Uh, Queen f2 also has to be played, otherwise maybe rook g8 will be coming, but what to play if not to play queen f2? We do have the video from the playing hall and uh, Ferosev is playing. I remember uh, two years ago in the Abu Dhabi chess festival, um, Fedose was playing in the Masters, it was uh, Rapid and Blitz, and he won the both tournaments. I was playing in the other tournaments, and 
it was a very nice tournament. Uh, I really enjoyed it and my results were also amazing. But Ferrocier won the festival and uh, so maybe Abu Dhabi is uh, one of the best cities for him to play. He's, he's seriously, last few days he was showing a very nice chess, a very solid, a very beautiful and uh, he wasn't missing anything in the calculations. Uh, all in all, the game was played on a high level and Let's see what's going to happen in this game. If he manages to win this game and convert his big, we can say, big material advantage into a win, uh, while his pieces are really not very well coordinating, then uh, he will be uh, so much close to winning this tournament. Because uh, extra one pawn, I mean, when you have you're ahead one, one point, then your opponent, it's a big advantage. Okay, so we have this position and white has queen g3. Uh, any other moves, knight d3 will be happening or uh, rook g8 even maybe. But uh, there are a lot of moves to calculate. Even rook b2 is a move to calculate here. I don't know what will happen after rook b2. Knight d3, what will happen here? Uh, knight d3 will not work because bishop d3 and the queen cannot capture it because there is rook b6 and if rook b2 what is the other white has many possibilities they just have to find the right one maybe there is just rook g8 and after rook g8 after rook g8 maybe white has uh, queen g8 capture and rook b6 so I will mention again that exchanging the queens is only a favor for white but what to play after rook b2? And why engine thinks that black is fine? It's not fine, but it's like the advantage is gone. Maybe there is b5. Forcing to capture and capturing knight d3. Because rook b6, we are forcing white to occupy the b6 square with the pawn instead of the rook uh, with the threat of a pin. And uh, yeah, there is b5 after rook b2. Okay, we will leave the first board alone and um, whether safe will probably spend some time because there is so much stuff to calculate in this position. And we can move to the board number two where after g5, uh, rook ac1 was played and g4 and knight d5. And we have this position where what is happening? Knight d5. If black captures, then white will capture with a c-pawn and attacking discovery attack on the black's queen. If uh, not to take, what to play? Uh, because I can, uh, white is just going to take the knight on f4. If the knight wants to stay on f4, let's say knight six captures the d5, captures and maybe queen d8. Queen d7, queen d7, let's say, adding more pressure on the pawn on h3. Okay, it was followed uh, with this move and maybe queen d7, but there is queen b6 hanging. So queen d8, <coughs> after queen d8, uh, white can just capture the pawn on g4, no? d6 is very weak. And the whole game, throughout the whole game, this d6 uh, pawn is going to make it. Okay, queen d8 was played. Okay, uh, I think we can move on. There is much happening in this game yet. In the game of Artemiev, uh, king c7, knight c5 followed, rook h e8, <coughs> bishop e6, bishop g6, and f4. White is playing for a win. This move like f4 is clearly trying to say that he's playing for a win. Okay, what to play with the black pieces here? Uh, king d6 doesn't work. Maybe king c6. But what to do? I mean, uh, f5 is gonna be following. f4, nicely played and uh, Artemiev is leading also in time. This didn't happen throughout the tournament for a long time. Maybe he's getting back into the shape and 
starting playing more uh, confidently. What if black plays f5 here, stopping the white f5? Maybe rook d1, rook d8. Is a for a possible move? Well, white is uh, overplaying. White is outplaying black in the end game. This is uh, very well played by Artemiev. Okay, maybe we shall move to the board number uh, four. Uh, a lot of stuff happened here. We didn't follow the game for a long time. Bishop g5, bishop g5, knight g5, h6, knight f3, rook d8, rook e1, knight c5, bishop d5, d4. Why the position looks equalish? Uh, rook d8, rook e3, knight e6. Knight f5, bishop c8, rook a1, and c5. And this is the position. Equal time, equal position, we can say. Yeah, white is a little bit pressing, but shouldn't be winning yet. Uh, I still want to go to the board number 5 of the Matlakov, because the game is developing very, very interesting and very fast. Uh, rook a8, queen c5. And knight b3. Has to capture and rook a1. King c2. Everything looks to be forced. Uh, queen e2. King c3. Wasn't there a move like rook d2? Queen f3 has to be played. Okay, king c3 was played, and after king c3, white is not losing a material. Queen f3, and rook d3 was played. Um, I, ne I need to go again. So one more time. Queen a7. Rook a8, queen c5, knight b3, captures, rook a1, everything is forced, king c2, queen e2, and uh, covering the check doesn't work because queen d1 will be uh, check and capturing the rook. Rook d2 is one a possibility, and let's say queen f3, queen c7, this is what white had in the mind or no? Uh, rook e7, and what will happen here? Maybe just uh, I don't I don't see it. Maybe Queen F4, but I'm not sure about this. Maybe Queen F4. Not really. Exchanging the queens is not for white. And trying to push the pawn or uh, Rook E7. What was uh, Matlakov afraid of this position? Rook E7. What did or he didn't see something. Is there a move like? Queen d8 threatening queen f8. No, there is queen e4 check. Maybe the same with queen c8, queen e4, and, and rook d3. Stopping the checks somehow. Queen e2, bishop d2. Okay, I think white can even go for this uh, for this line, because uh, I feel like uh, white with this time uh, they will be happy to do to do a draw. So rook d2, queen f3, everything goes forced, I guess. Queen c7 has to be played, rook e7, and yeah, maybe he, white was scared about this uh, queen c8 and later trying queen e4. Uh, very complicated line. So white chose to play king c3. And now is another question. Why not to capture uh, the rook?
What will happen? Queen c7? Check, I guess. Because rook e7, knight e5, but maybe there is just queen e7. Or no, knight e5, king f6, and, uh, and queen c6. Okay, so after queen c7, let's say rook e7. What is happening now? If knight e5, what is the difference in this position? If knight e5, there is queen e5. And uh, after queen e5, it will be losing. Okay, so rook d1. Now what to play? Maybe knight e5 right away. Knight e5, but rook e5 after knight e5. Oh, queen f8 checkmate. Queen f8 checkmate. Uh, beautiful. So knight e5, let's say king g8. Is there any other beautiful line here? Bishop e6 maybe. Bishop e6. King goes to h8. How to give a checkmate here? Knight f7 check, king g8. Is there something happening here that I don't see? Or maybe just uh, knight d6. No, knight d6 will not work. Uh, knight d6 will not work. How to win here with the white pieces? Maybe there is this beautiful line. Knight d8. No, it will not work. King h8. No, doesn't work. I was thinking maybe bishop g7, but uh, okay, I have to come back to the same position and how to give a checkmate. Maybe knight e5, king h8, and well, it just goes around. I have to come back. What happens after knight g5, king h8? Oh, maybe now bishop g7 will work because there is no longer uh, covering from e7. Uh, bishop e7, let's, uh, let's see. Uh, check. Okay, if king f6. Knight h7, checkmate. Oh, okay, there's king a6. There's no checkmate. Sorry. Uh, king f6. How to give a checkmate? This is our main question now. Yeah, okay, maybe just queen f4, king e7, check, and checkmate. Uh, this is if king f6, and what if after um, queen c7, king h6? Has to be also a checkmate. Queen h7, king g5, queen g6, and and queen f5 checkmate. Okay, so capturing rook d1 wouldn't work. That's why black played queen f3, and it followed with the rook d3. And black is calculating right now. What to play? Queen e2? What is the white threat? Queen c7, maybe. What will happen after queen f6? Just, let's say I want to play a natural chess. Okay, I understand. Queen e4, queen e4. Because rook e3 is impossible, it uh, it makes uh, rook c1 possible. Queen e4, I want to protect d7, and if queen c7, just uh, rook e7. And uh, next move uh, might be g5. Rook d3, queen e4.
Queen e4 looks good. Yeah, after rook d3. So Leimonov is uh, still calculating, but uh, something is telling me Queen e4 will be played. I offer to go back to the first board and see what happened there. So after King e6, Queen g3 was played. Uh, queen d4 and uh, queen f2. We went through this line. And knight d3. Knight d3 was played. But what else to play? Why Evalbar doesn't like this knight d3? Is there a possibility to take queen d3? Captures, captures. King f1 takes the queen. Takes with the king. Okay, let's see. No, with the king and knight e4. King e1, because after knight g3 I have to have the rook h2. And maybe this rook is stuck here. Maybe this would be an interesting idea, but okay. Uh, we check this knight d3, bishop d3, queen d3, and queen f5 check. And king e7 was played. We checked king f7 here, I guess. Somewhere. And there was rook d2, right. King e7, uh, queen e5, king f7, and and this is the position and how to play here. Eval Bar confidently says that white is winning here. But for the computer, it's of course much easier to make uh, calculations and decisions in this position because, uh, well, how to play. If knight e2, for example, there is queen b1. Maybe just rook b2. Is there something happening after rook b2, queen d1, king f2, or it is just one check? It looks to be only one check. How to protect the rook b7? Queen d7? Maybe? Okay, I don't see anything happening. King f7 and... Fedosev is calculating, uh, he knows, he knows that he has a winning position and he needs to play uh, accurate. A few accurate moves and the material advantage, which is huge, will be transformed to a point. Nice game, nice game, rook b2, rook b2 has to be played uh, probably. Uh, let's check uh, Salem's game. What is happening there? Yes, okay. Uh, we stopped on the move. B4, B6, Knight E2, captured, captured, B5. We saw this position, Queen C1 was played, King H7, Knight H4, D5. Yeah, we stopped here. Uh, white captured bishop d5 and b white captured to queen d5 knight c3 queen d7 knight b5 black lost the pawn but uh, g5 knight g2 and e4 bishop c3 rook b8 knight a3 knight d4 bishop d4 queen d4 c3 Salem is still pawned down, but after queen d3, the material is equal, but knight e3 and queen a6. Can black use the weakness of the white squares here or no? This is the main question. And also c3 looks uh, kind of a weak yet, but okay, later it's going to play c4. Queen c2 was played uh, with an interesting trap. Queen a3 is impossible because rook a1 is trapping the queen. After queen c2... How can the knight transform uh, to f3? Currently e4 is hanging. And also their times are uh, are more equal now. How to continue here? Maybe the rook e8 with the idea knight d7 uh, f5? I can try uh, because uh, white always wants to play e3 maybe. Uh, Hey Aram and welcome to the chat. And f3 will be played. Uh, e4, e4 is hanging now. Uh, but uh, the problem is that the knight cannot move. 
And uh, evaluation bar thinks that Salem has an advantage. But how? Maybe queen d3 is possible now. Just create a passed pawn. Nope, apparently no. Though queen d3 has to be an advantage still. As uh, Omar used to say, we don't trust in uh, in Evalbar. Okay, is there any other uh, game happening? Uh, there is a chance Salem will uh, convert this uh, into a point. Because last two games we can say that he was kind of unlucky. Uh, let's check what is happening on the second board after g4. Uh, queen d8, uh, white captured on g4, bishop captured, and g3 was played, knight g6, and bishop e2. And black has a serious problems here with this uh, b6 and d6 pawns, which are rook c6 might be coming, and uh, well, I like the white's position, maybe how to play, even rook c8 is not possible, a6 will be hanging, black doesn't have any attack, any, any move, uh, white is going to play bishop c6. And let's say bishop c7, also h6 is hanging. So black has to protect h6, and the next move is going to be rook c6 attacking the pawn on b6. And black has, we can say that black has problems here. Let's move to the third board, and Artemiev, uh, after f4, rook a d8 was played, f5, and bishop h5. White is slowly, slowly uh, pushing the black's position here, and uh, and yeah, the bishop on e6 is a monster, and maybe at some point White just will replace the bishop with a knight on e6. Uh, maybe right now, bishop b3. I want to replace the e6 square uh, bishop with a knight. What to play now? Knight e6 is coming. Is king b8 possible? King b8, let's say knight e6. Rook d7, after rook d7 I'll play knight f4 and I like white's position. I like white's position and also he's leading in time. Uh, let's go to the board number 4. And let's see what happened here. Okay, where we stopped here. Um, d7 and uh, a4, c6, captures, captures, yes. And d5 was played. Uh, captured, captured, bishop g5, bishop g5, knight g5, h6, knight f3, rook d8, rook e1. Everything looks very natural right now. Bishop d5, rook d5, d4, captures knight d4, and uh, yeah, white in this position, white was having a little bit advantage because knight e7 was a threat. Rook c8, bishop c8, rook a1, and c5, b3, bishop b7, c4. Captures, captures, and the rook d7, knight e5, and this is our current position. Uh, is the rook trapped? Uh, there is rook d2. What happens after rook d2? Queen b1. And knight f7 is a threat. Knight f7 is a threat. Can black protect knight f7? Maybe knight g5? Knight g5? Is it possible to play... Oh, there is h4. And knight has to go back and again knight f7. Well, I th it looks like we're going to have a lot of decisive games today and the decisive results uh, today because uh, all the positions are so sharp, so playful and... Uh, 
So 95. Okay, I think we can move to the game and uh, board number five. Uh, rook d3, queen h1 was played. And queen c7. And queen c7. Uh, black is threatening to play rook c1 check, bishop c1 and queen c1. Winning the queen. Uh, after queen c7, black has uh, two options, either rook e7 or bishop e7. If rook e7, there should be a possibility of... Uh, well, the queen has to run, that's for sure. If queen f4... Will this work? Bishop f6? Most like bishop g5, do they work? Or queen e1 will be played. Queen e1. Yes, rook d2 and uh, rook c1. And if king d3, uh, black can just play queen e4, exchanging the queens, and uh, it will be game over. After queen h1, queen c7 was played. Uh, Rook e7, what to play? Maybe just run away with the queen. Uh, queen b8, let's say, with the threat of queen f8 checkmate. Does black have a fast win here? Uh, queen e1, maybe? Queen e1. Bishop d2. Looks like to be the only move. And let's say rook c1, there is just queen b king b4. The position is very, very sharp, and uh, white has only eight minutes. Is it enough to play in this position with the eight minutes? It's very hard to say because after rook e7, white has to find a move. And it's not easy to find a move. Uh, bishop e7, uh, let's say other possibility. Uh, how to play, how to play, but uh, now this uh, rook c1 is a real threat because uh, it, it will be a checkmate, queen f4, bishop f6, pawn captures, maybe pawn captures since they are a move for white, no, I don't want to capture, why, what to play now? Okay, rook c1 at least is not a threat anymore, but now queen e1 is a threat. So many threats. So many threats. Uh, rook e7 was played in the game. And uh, is there something crazy like. So many ideas like bishop e6, king takes, maybe rook e3, king f7. Because king f5 is impossible, it will be a checkmate, queen f4, uh, king f7 after uh, rook e3. And uh, is there something for white here or no? Maybe white has a draw here. Like queen f4, uh, bishop f6, capture, capture and uh, try to give a perpetual check. For our viewers, if you see any, any move here uh, that I'm missing in the line, uh, please let me know. Well, Matlakov has only six minutes left on the clock. And the position is uh, surrounded with so many opportunities for white. And so many threats from black. So many checks from white. Uh, so many threats from black, it will be easier to say. And, uh, well... I think we just need to get the popcorn and watch this game because uh, this game is super sharp. We have another sharp game. Let's not forget about it. Let's go to the first board to see what happened there. So queen f5, king e7, white captured queen e5, king f7, and queen a1 was played. We were thinking of playing rook b2, and after rook b2, uh, I don't know why, why Fedosiev was scared of this line. 
Maybe he was scared of b5, capture and rook e8. This is a possible line. The king is just very unprotected here and of course uh, white has the right to be scared but after b5 maybe there is some other move. Uh, black's threat is uh, rook e8. Is there some other move? Maybe just knight e2 here. And unlike the previous position, the queen b1 is no longer a possibility. But uh, yes, knight e2 and rook f1 is a threat. There is no check. If rook e8, uh, white can just go for probably how to continue here. Queen c7 or queen c5 or queen c3. Maybe just queen c3. Queen c3 is possible. And after queen c3, it's just... Queen c3, there is a move, apparently. Maybe queen e4. And white is losing the knight, but there is rook f1. Is there rook f1? I'm already scared to offer, offer a move, because uh, madness is happening on the board. Oh. Okay, let's say knight e2. Rook e8. What to play? What to play? Evelbor thinks that white is completely winning. But when we are doing the natural moves, it just keeps saying that, no, you're not. <laughs> what to play? What was he scared of? This is what I'm trying to understand. Okay, let's just move the queen somewhere. Rook e4. <laughs> and you will never believe what is the move here. Short castle. <laughs> on the move 32 white could play a uh, short castle and it's winning but okay it didn't happen uh, king f7 uh, white was scared of something and he played uh, Ferusev played queen a1 and Evalbar now doesn't like the position already he thinks that it has to be equal but the king is very dangerous by the way I start to believe that there is a big chance that this game will end in a draw because uh, I was saying even yesterday when the madness is happening on the chessboard and they are someone is winning and then the other one is winning and then it's draw and then and then the evaluation is changing every move usually these games end in a draw and maybe this is one of those games but uh, we have to be honest uh, three results are possible in this position white has a very big position uh, material advantage but the king is so weak uh, what can black play now? Rook e8 is possibility. Knight e4 is possibility. Uh, these two moves that I see like right away that uh, are very natural to my eyes. Maybe even king g3 check is a possibility. Even queen e4 is possibility. Uh, so many lines. I I'm already confused in this game. I'm, I'm very confused in this game, to be honest. White wants to play knight e2 short castle. This is for sure. Let's say knight e4. Knight e2. What happens? Bishop e2. Rook e2. Queen g3 check. And king d1. And king f1. Not king d1. After king d1 there is uh, rook d8. Or maybe here is something. I'm, I'm very confused. I'm very confused by this evil bar. Maybe I should just turn off the evil bar and try to check myself. Uh, knight e4. Okay, knight e2. What happens after rook e8? Knight e2. 
Let's say rook e4 and white can play here castle. This is what my uh, inner sense is telling me. Yeah, this is winning. But okay, rook e8, knight e2. Then maybe again we should be two, rook e2 and check. But there is always king f1. And uh, yeah. Okay. Then what to play after? Uh, if knight e4, I, I was checking knight e2. I, white wants to play a short castle and this is an amazing move. Uh, move on the round 30. White wants to short castle and win the game. So bishop e2, rook e2. Uh, queen g3, and what, what shall white play here? So king f1, and Evalbar hated one of them, king d1 or f1, or loved both of them, I don't know. Yeah, after some time, uh, Evalbar, of course, started hating king f1. I wonder what it will think about king d1. King d1, rook d8. Yeah, rook d8 has to be game over. But somehow it's not a game over according to Evelbar. Well, I don't, I don't trust this Evelbar anymore. Okay, enough. I don't trust the Evelbar. The position is really crazy, but... Uh, we can say one thing for sure, white has a clear plan. Knight e2, short castle, win the game. Knight e2, bishop captures, rook captures, and checks and try to hide with the king. And uh, use the material advantage. And black is getting lower and lower in time. Okay, we have, by the way, one result on the board number four, uh, knight e5. And uh, black played knight d4, nice move. Knight d7, knight c2. What happened here? Rook e8. And white went just for the perpetual check and it ended in a draw. Okay, we have a uh, draw on the board number four. Let's just very quickly check what is happening in the Matlakov game and then we will go for our last uh, short break. Uh, queen b8 was played, uh, which was a good move. Uh, saving the queen from rook c1 attacks. And where else we had an interesting game? Uh, we didn't check these positions for a long time. Uh, okay, board number 10 I was checking today and two young players were playing on the board number 10. Vaz and Murzin. And both of them are very young. Uh, let, me, let me actually check how old they are. Uh, because, okay, Vaz Ethan is born in 2011, so he's 12 years old. And his opponent, Murzin, is born in 2006. Also a quite young player with a very, very high rating. And uh, yes, the white, the player Vaz Ethan with a 2300 rating is pl playing on the board number 10 and he's only 12 years old, which is amazing. And he's showing a performance of 2666. He kept winning a lot of strong uh, players and grandmasters. Uh, he's showing an amazing performance for the 12 years old. And this is uh, great. This is a uh, new, new Indian prodigy maybe is coming up because what is happening uh, now, uh, like when I see the Indian kids playing, it's, it's fantastic. Not only kids, I mean, we can follow the World Cup and uh, we saw that how many Indian strong grandmasters were in the semifinals. And yes, I want to check this game. Uh, so, e4, c5, knight f3, e6. And there was played a Sicilian. It's kind of a cross. Yeah, here the idea for white is to play bishop f4. But okay, queen e2 is in the wrong place. Uh, knight d2 and white tries to convert the knight to h2, g4, h5. 
H6 trying to uh, put a pressure on the black pieces A4, A3, but black uh, in the other side tries to push on the queen side and okay d4 white tried to close and white and black sacrificed the pawn to ruin the pawn structure of the black bishop a3 beautiful the thing is that rook a3 doesn't work now because there is b4 a discovery attack on the queen and uh, attacking the rook so white didn't capture it rook b1 and bishop e7 queen e3 knight b6 h5 h6 black uh, ignores the white's attempts to attack on the queen side king side c1 g6 bishop h3 g5 rook c6 queen f4 captures captures rook e1 bishop c8 takes takes and we have this position um usually uh, when white in this kind of a structure when white is not managing to get an advantage on the queen king side black will win the game in the queen side it's not very easy uh, to say yet because uh, there is also no way for the black to break through there is a nice square on e5 for the knight for the white knight and e6 is a weakness uh, the pawn on h6 is always going to create some ideas for bringing the queen to attack it and uh, queen h4 was played queen f8 and uh, the thing is that Young player Vas Ethan, Ethan, he's he's low on time, but of course uh, we can see that it's a future grandmaster coming soon. Queen F eight and. Uh, Bishop g2 maybe is the move, because moving the knight, uh, okay, white has a move, like knight g5, rook f2, trying to get uh, the pawn on e6, and knight g5 might be a possibility. Well, queen f8, uh, knight g5 was played, knight g5 was played in the game, and uh, here Murzin has needs to... Uh, make a decision looks like uh, maybe he will try to blitz out the opponent but uh, it's not very easy to play because when you move the rook on from f6 e6 pawn is hanging and uh, trying trying to find some ideas uh, let, let's go back to the first board because uh, okay after queen a1 nothing happened and board number five these are the two crazy games uh, today. Not only them, I'm pretty sure there are other games. And someone in the chat, if you will see any game happening that you think it's interesting or you want to check it out, just let me know. After queen b8, queen e1 was played. Rook d2, bishop d2, rook c1, king b4. Okay, everything looks to be forced. And queen e4, not to lose the rook. And bishop g2. So much calculation, uh, okay, let's say if queen g2, okay, white's idea is clean, uh, clear, uh, was to capture the rook. Uh, if queen d3, white wants to capture bishop d5, and then the queen and the bishop will play very well together, maybe it's winning. Okay, what to play after bishop g2? Yeah, maybe uh, queen g2 has to be played and go to this position. White has only four minutes on the board, on the on the clock. Sorry. Okay, uh, we will take the last break of the day, and we will be back very shortly. I will try to check out in the playing hall what is happening. One more time, you're following the fifth round of the of Dabi Chess Festival 2023, and don't go anywhere. The games are really fascinating today, and uh, we have very very fighting chess happening on the top boards. See you very soon. We'll be back after a short break.
Welcome back to the round five of the Abu Dhabi Chess Festival. And we are back from the break. Um, while I was in the playing hall, I saw another uh, finished game. Uh, Hans Niemann's game was finished. I would like to quickly go through it to check out what happened there. Uh, Rook d1 and Hans Niemann played knight a c5. Bishop b4, queen a4, and queen b2. I wonder what will happen if, okay, taking doesn't work because bishop e5, the knight on e5 is hanging. And bishop b4, queen a4, queen b2 was played, bishop e5, white already is getting the advantage, rook a6 and f3. Black is just losing a piece. Was there a way to uh, keep this piece on the board? Maybe just knight a6 was the move to not to lose this piece. Still doesn't work according to to the evil bar. Maybe Maybe just bishop a3 or... Uh, okay, what happens f3? Knight b4. Well, here everything is fine. Knight a6, how to win the piece here? Just rook a1 is possible. Queen b4, queen b4, knight b4, and rook will capture the rook. Okay, so after rook a6, f3, and uh, black is losing a piece. Rook b6 captures knight a6. Okay. Can white save the piece? Knight c3, queen b4. But it follows with the queen d2, queen a5, and rook a1 probably will be winning now. Yeah. Queen b4 and maybe even this move was possible. Uh, forcing queen c5 and knight a4. Well, there is rook b1, uh, gets two pieces against the queen. It has to be winning. Captures, captures, and took on d5, white just took on d5 and uh, it's gonna be game over, e6. And uh, material is equal, but the king is very weak for the black and after check, rook d7, white is winning the queen and black resigned here. So uh, on the board number, on the board number uh, six, uh, Lidi beat Hans Niemann Mock, and now Lidi has four points. Uh, I saw some things happened in the on the first board, and I want to check out. So Queen A1, it followed with the uh, Knight E4, Knight E2 as predicted, Bishop E2 and Rook E2, because otherwise White wanted to do a short castle. Uh, King g8, rook f1. Black is winning after rook f1. What was white supposed to play? Rook f1 and knight c3. Okay, what was black supposed to play? How black is winning here? Queen g3 maybe. What will happen after queen g3? Queen g3, if king d1, there is knight c3. And if rook f2, black just captures and the king is very weak. There was queen g3 check. And uh, black would be winning here. What? It would be crazy. Knight c3 was played. Rook e7, queen g3 and rook f2. I saw this position on the chessboard. And I think black played here rook f8. If I'm not mistaken, I cannot say for sure. Uh, but okay, this is what we have. Uh, rook f2 was played in the game. And wow, here uh, rook d8 was played. Okay, I saw it wrong. Uh, apparently after one more time, rook e7. Uh, after rook f1, black could take the advantage with the move queen g3 and black will be winning.
black was just winning a piece apparently because okay let's say uh, rook ff2 knight f2 they have to capture how black is winning here rook e8 check looks has to be good uh, king f1 and and queen h2 and there was this move queen h2 and queen h1 is unstoppable wow both of them they didn't have time and they blundered this it's very understandable so rook e7 queen g3 rook f2 rook d8 was played and uh Xiu Ju has only seconds on the chessboard last move he did with four seconds let's go very fast to the second game second board and uh, in this position we should be two king h7 uh, rook g8 king f1 b5 white still has a very stable uh, advantage captures and now d6 and b5 both are hanging okay black finds a way not to lose them bishop b4 and uh, well rook c7 king g8 knight g1 rook a1 check yes bishop d1 and what happens later bishop g2 f3 h5 okay and bishop f1 very nice move very nice move and apparently we can say that white lost the uh, advantage here now and uh, exactly which moment knight g1 was a very passive move instead of knight g1 white could play uh, something else some move maybe king d2 Knight g1 looks very passive because all the pieces start going back. But okay, black is still holding the position and that's why. But uh, bishop f1 and what is happening? Rook d2. Threatening to capture this bishop. How this bishop is going to be saved? What is the black's idea here? How to save this bishop? Seriously. Am I, am I uh, bishop h6? Yes, this has to be a move, yeah. I still don't believe in this. What about if I play here rook f2? Let's say bishop d3 and bishop d6. Can this be a line? This can be a line. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Why not? Okay, um, let's move to the board number three. Uh, as long as I checked, our team have had the big advantage. Okay, ninety six rook before. I saw this position. I saw this part where he gave a check. King e four, knight c five, king f four, knight b seven, and white has a completely winning position. Yeah, here I saw this part. Knight e six, king e four. Knight c5, king f4, g3, king g4, and uh, knight d4. White has to be very winning. It's two extra pawns and uh, without any counterplay. Okay, Artemiev most probably will win the game. And Matlakov Maxim after bishop g2 uh, was played to rook d8. It followed uh, queen f4, captures, bishop d5 in between move, uh, grabbing the pawn and bishop f4. And here it's already not easy to say what is happening. Bishop c6, bishop f2, and b4. Rook e4 was played. And uh, both of them have equal time. Two minutes, two minutes on the clock. Rook e4, maybe bishop d6 or bishop g5. And then trying to push the pawn. Why not? Well, everything got uh, out of control. It's a crazy game. Let's go to the board number seven. See what is happening here. We didn't check this game for a long time. So uh, Sindarov is playing against Chanda and Bishop b4, Rook c1, Bishop d3, Bishop c6. White king cannot castle for now. Knight e5, Knight e7, 
Knight d3 captures king e2. Bishop c3 captures rook d6. Rook d1 captures, captures. Okay. Why it looks so drawish to me? Looks drawish. White has a bishop. We'll try to, of course, fight for a win. But uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see what is happening. Are they repeating the moves? Uh, Black uh, showed a very, very nice technique, by the way, here. Uh, bringing the king to protect the a7 pawn so that the rook will be free. Uh, but the pawns are kind of weak for now. and uh, But they are on the white square, so only the rook can attack them. Are they just repeating the moves? Uh, nothing is happening. I'm going very fast, uh, very quickly, because... Uh, all the natural moves are done. White is trying to do something, but uh, looks like it doesn't work out. And knight on d5 is just too strong. Wait, wait, wait! What happened? White lost a pawn. No, white is getting it back, and we have this rook end game. What is this rook end game? Uh, King has to go where? If king e5, there is rook b6. Okay, captures the pawn. Uh, if king d5, is there a check? Let's say king d4, rook f5, and king c3. And black is taking the b3 pawn, and the pawn will go to a queen. Uh, what is this rook end game? Uh, so we have this position, rook a6. And uh, the king has to go either d5 or c5. We can say, let's say, king d5 again. Rook b6 and king c5. Any moment uh, the rook goes away from this b file, like rook f6, I will bring the king to c3. And maybe uh, white has to keep the rook on the b file so that the king cannot move. Is there a move like f4? And then maybe rook c7, king d5, rook b7. Can can just repeat the position. Has to, has to be a draw, but uh, they have to be to play carefully. So this was the position of Sindarov. And uh, yeah, here we have an interesting game, by the way. Um, I'll go to the last position on the board number. Uh, this was eight or nine. Uh, Let's go a few moves back to see what happened here. So apparently it was an equal position. Bishop a6, f4, c5, uh, rook e1, knight e6, knight f2, and knight f4. Black took the pawn, but knight g4. Knight transformed to f6. Knight h5, bishop d5, rook d8, and queen f2. Threatening bishop f7. Uh, king g7, queen e3. And the black squares are very weak for the black. And king h8, uh, queen e3, f5 was played. Knight h6, and knight f7, f4, queen f3, and rook d5. So, oh, black is not even uh, bothering to take on queen f7, just queen h4, threatening checkmate, queen h3, and queen g2. Uh, rook e3 has to be played. Uh, is there no rook d3? No, e1 is hanging. So they cannot protect the pawn. Uh, is there queen d3? Or b3? There is just c4. There is just c4 and uh, black is winning. Wow. So just rook d5. White blundered the rook d5 move. So... Okay, here uh, after queen h4, black is completely winning. Rook e3 and bishop g2. Why? Because black couldn't take it. Uh, queen h4 is hanging, but bishop g2, uh, it will follow with the... Uh, if queen g2, there is king g2, there is f3. Black is winning the queen. If bishop g2, any other move like uh, king g1, let's say... Uh, what can black play here? 
Maybe just bishop uh, h3 and uh, queen g4 is a threat. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to have an uh, interesting result here too. And on board 9, uh, let's see what happened here. Abis Alimov against Nguyen. White has a big advantage, I guess, because the bishop on f8 is dead. Okay. Yeah, and uh, this is the current position where white is pawn up and the pawn is a passed pawn. One is a past pawn. Uh, I offer to very fast check the uh, game where our the 12 years old uh, Van Eason was playing. At e6 was a blunder apparently. Uh, why was it a blunder? Was there bishop f6 maybe first? Yeah, there was bishop f6, bishop e6, uh, bishop e6 and uh, rook e6. Because the next move is knight f3. Okay, after rook e6 uh, captures knight f3, black missed the winning opportunity. Okay, white gets the pawn back, and what is happening here? Has to be a draw. Yeah, okay, it ended in a draw. Very nicely played by Valens Ethan. Uh, Murzin. Uh, Missed the opportunity for uh, going for it, but uh, with the rookie six. But then uh, young uh, Vas Ethan played very well. By the way, we have another ex uh, another result on the board number three. Uh, in this position, uh, after everything, Artemiev's game was didn't last very long, and uh, White won. And let's go to check the first board again because. We have a very important game on the first board. Rook d8, king f1 was played. Rook d1, queen d1 captures and rook e8. And is this going to be a draw? Is this going to be a draw? I think we're going to have another draw on the first board after the insanely crazy game. We can say that we're going to have a draw on the first board. What a beautiful game was played today by both players, uh, Ferosiev and uh, Xiu. What a beautiful game. Okay, what happened here in the Matlakov's game? Uh, another game uh, where all this madness happened. Let's see what happened afterwards. Rookie four. Uh, okay. White lost the pawn on... Uh, did White have to lose the pawn on d4? Wasn't there any other move? No, bishop d4 is a threat. Okay, White is losing the pawn. And they got to this uh, opposite colored bishop's position where White has a passed pawn, but most probably we're going to have another draw in this game. We are going to have another draw in this game. Let's see what is happening on the second board. Uh, so what was played after bishop f1 is bishop d2, f5, rook c1. Yeah, looks like we're going to have another draw in this game, but uh, looks pretty unstable. And on the board 7, yeah, also here we might have a draw. Four and white is losing a white is winning a pawn or but there is rook d3 after king f5 there is rook d3 and uh, Chanda was uh, Sindara was trying to calculate what will happen he just went for rook f6 and Chanda has a lot of time uh, is there a move like king d4 in this end game rook f5 and king c3 rook h5 king b3 uh, hard to say. Has to be a still a draw. This rook end game has to be a draw. 
yes, we have another result on the board number eight, where uh, after bishop g2, white played king g1, bishop h3, rook h3, queen h3, and black's position is completely winning after queen f3. Uh, it's double attack on the king and the rook, and it is uh, winning for black. Okay, on the board number one, uh, the game still continues. Uh, black played after rook f6, knight e3, king f2, and this has to end in a draw very, very soon. Queen g2, queen e king e3 is going to follow up. What is happening? King e3, queen h3, and let's say king e4. Okay, king h3, queen h3 happened. And let's just follow you this game. Uh, maybe black has an idea just... Well, but uh, now maybe white can start playing for a win. Because uh, king e4... I think black played a little bit dangerous. King e4 is possible. And the time is ticking. We have a draw in the game, Cinder of in the Rook end game. On the board number seven. Just after Rook f6, the game was agreed to end in a draw. And But I say we're still thinking King D2 was played on the board. I think we're going to have a draw also in the Matlock of game very soon. Yeah. Okay, let's just follow the first board and we will finish our stream right after this game. Let's see what is happening on the second board also, because this is a very important uh, game. Uh, so after knight h4, knight c3, bishop d7, knight g2, and knight f4. Uh, b5 is untakeable you what can take the d5 but b5 but d5 will be hanging okay let's just concentrate on queen h2 yeah black is trying is trying to go for a draw we're going to have a draw soon uh, can we check the video of the first board to see if they are still playing or the game ended in a draw Okay, they are still playing. They are still playing on the first board. No, they are analyzing. So the game, uh, we can say that finished in a draw. And uh, on the second board, there were some exchanges. Knight b5, knight d5 happened in the game. So we have uh, two players who have four and a half out of five rounds, and they are still sharing the lead. The game was very interesting, very fighting. And uh, we have the second board where the winner will catch up the leaders. And let's check what happened in the Salem's game very quickly.
Okay, let's see. Uh, queen c2, it followed with the rook c8, queen b3, d5. Everything looks fine yet. Rook e8, uh, rook e5, knight c3. Queen f5, king h1, a6, knight d5, rook e5. This pawn looks very dangerous. Rook g1, queen g4, rook f1, and, uh, and c7. And after c7, Wow, rook c8 and uh, the rook d7, uh, unfortunately Salem had to resign, but what a game, what a miss. Uh, Salem had a, such a nice uh, World Cup and here uh, all, all the winning games that he has, it somehow doesn't work out. Even, even today he had a nice advantage at some point, but uh, it didn't work out. Uh, okay, the second board is still playing. White won a pawn. And yes, we have the official result on the first board. It was a draw. Fedosev against uh, Xiu Xianju. And on the board number five, what happened here? We don't have any moves, most probably also the board number five, Matlakov against Suleimanov, finished in a draw and we have the second board fighting yet. Uh, White has one extra pawn, I'm trying to play for a win, but it is not going that easy. It's not going to be that easy. What ideas are here to play for a win? It's a, it's a drawish position. Maybe they even finished the game already. After king d5, white is thinking, Aryan Chopra, the grandmaster from India. He's trying to find some opportunities to win this game, but... Uh, it is not going to be easy. And black has enough time to hold this position. White has one extra pawn, but... Sometimes it is not enough to win this kind of uh, end games. And B6, black is not rushing anywhere. Maybe king C6, uh, white can uh, try the king E4 move, and this is the idea or knight c4, like let's say king c6, uh, king e4, uh, if takes, takes and uh, try to put uh, black in the situation where they have to stop the both pawns, uh, but shouldn't be very hard. But uh, there are some ideas for white to win this game. Okay, king c5 was played. And uh, are we going to see king e4 in this position or no? Are we going to see, okay, no, knight a4 was played, so probably they're just going to repeat the game. Yes, we can see in the video that they are still playing. Most of the games already finished. Knight a4, just uh, maybe king d5. Ah, the idea is to give a check from knight c3. And uh, so 
So let's say king d5, white wants to give a check, uh, push the king back and put the king on e4 and later try to transform the knight into the c4 square and capture this e5 pawn. So knight a4, uh, king d5 was played, knight c3, this might be the only idea. Yes, knight c3 was played. Let's say uh, king uh, c5 or king d6, king... E no, king d6 is better, or even king... E a any move has to be throwish, but uh, white has an idea and white will try to make it work. If it works, it will work. If it doesn't work, uh, white has the draw anyways. So king c5 was played, and after king e4, we're gonna see king d6. King e4 was played. King d6, knight b5, king e6, uh, knight a3. Let's say, uh, is it going to work or no? Knight a3. Okay, knight c6 was played. Also, also a very drawish uh, position. The game continues on the second board. We can, you can see in the video. And meanwhile, we have a draw also on the fifth board, uh, Matlakov versus Suleimanov. We have the ninth board still happening. Oh, okay. Yeah, why it is pawn up uh, end game. Knight c6 was played, white is taking its time, but the next move uh, might even just be knight d4 and capturing the pawn on b3 and it has to be a draw. Players are still playing. Looks like they just finished the game and they are analyzing it. You can see in the video, uh, it had to end in a draw. We have a 15 minutes delay. Uh, the game ended in a draw and uh, well, we have interesting results today. On the first board, one more time, Fedosiev against Xuxianju was a draw. On the second board also was a draw and Yes, they are analyzing the game. I cannot see where they are putting the kings, but it has to be a draw because they are analyzing very friendly. And on the third board, Artemyev is coming back and he won his game against Venkata Raman. Uh, and then we have uh, draws on the fourth and fifth boards. We have a uh, result on the sixth board, Lee D beats Hans Niemann. And uh, well, we can say that we have still only two leaders in the tournament and uh, most of the players are still behind in the points, at least half a point. And one more time, thanks for following the fifth round of the Abu Dhabi Chess Festival 2023. And let me remind you that there are more than 1,700 participants in the tournament and it's one of the biggest chess opens of the year. It is held from 14th of August until 24th of August in the capital of the United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi. And here with you was me, Maria Gevurkian. See you tomorrow the same time for the round six of the Abu Dhabi Chess Festival. Have a good day, everyone. Goodbye.